Hello, beautiful people. Um, my name is Chukwemeka. Well, the purpose of this video is to bring to your notice the effect of the Sudan war. The war that is being fought in Sudan. Don't feel relaxed right here in Nigeria or in the rest of African country, especially the West Africa. Don't feel relaxed because it's happened in uh, it's happening in uh, Sudan, far away Sudan, and to you, anything can happen. But let me tell you, every person, especially in Nigeria, will be affected by that war. Every damn soul will be affected economically and security wise. Will be affected. What are you hearing? You're hearing the ginger weed. The ginger weed was a militia group, just like the Boko Haram just like the Islam. But sometime in the history of Sudan, they were integrated to be a regular force. And there was a power sharing uh, that was broken up between the, like you have the Nigerian army and Boko Haram. So now that problem, that power sharing issue has metamorphosed into what is happening right now in Sudan. I don't want to say so much words here. I don't want to talk too much. I want you to watch this video. There has been an analysis, a comprehensible analysis about the war in Sudan and how it will affect you. Maybe after this video, I will now explain how this war in Sudan will affect every soul in Nigeria. Use Boko Haram and Iswap as a case study. Thank you. Keep watching and God bless. Fighting erupted in Chartum and other cities in Sudan as mighty rival military factions battle for control increasing the risk of a nationwide civil war. This started on April 15th after weeks of tension between the army and the powerful paramilitary group, the Rapid Support Forces, RSF. On this same day, over 56 civilians' lives were lost and over 595 people were wounded in fierce fighting between both parties. These two groups were allies. In fact, they seized power in the October 2021 Sudan coup that General Abdul Fattah al-Burhan led with the help of the RSF, which is commanded by General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo. Now, why are two allies fighting? What are the possible outcomes? What is the fate of Sudan? Welcome back to The New Tourist. In this video, we will go through the recent events in Sudan and what led to them. We will also show you some consequences that this power struggle and violence in Sudan will have on the Horn of Africa. The battles follow rising tensions over the proposed integration of the RSF into the military. The disagreement has delayed the signing of an internationally backed agreement with political parties on a transition to democracy. In recent months, these tensions were exacerbated by a deterioration in relations between General Abdul Fattah al burhan commander of Sudan's military, and General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, head of the RSF. What is the RSF and how was it formed? The RSF evolved from so-called Janjaweed militias, which fought in a conflict in the 2000s in the Darfur region, where they were used by the government of long-ruling President Omar al-Bashir to help the army put down a rebellion that claimed 300,000 lives and displaced over 2.5 million people. Over time, the militia grew. It was made into the RSF in 2013, and its forces were used as border guards in particular. In 2015, the RSF, along with Sudan's army, began sending troops to fight in the war in Yemen alongside Saudi and Emirati forces. In the same year, the group was granted the status of a regular force. In 2017, a law legitimizing the RSF as an independent security force was passed. As of today, the RSF has about 100,000 fighters and is commanded by General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, commonly known as Hemeti, or Little Mohammed. He currently holds the position of deputy head of Sudan's ruling sovereign council. Dagalo was born into an impoverished family that settled in Darfur in the 1980s. He dropped out of school in the third grade and made a living trading camel before becoming a Janjaweed leader when the Darfur conflict broke out. As the RSF became more prominent and its role in the country's security affairs grew, Dagalo's business interests prospered with help from al-Bashir. His family expanded its holdings in gold mining, livestock, and infrastructure. In April 2019, the RSF participated in a military coup that removed al-Bashir, 
after months of demonstrations against his 30-year rule. Four months later, the military and the pro-democracy movement reached a power-sharing deal, which established a joint military-civilian council that would govern Sudan for the next three years until elections were held. Dangalo was made vice chairman of the council headed by al -Burhan. In October 2021, the RSF was involved in another coup with the army, halting the transition to a democratically elected government. The move triggered new mass pro-democracy rallies across Sudan that continue until today. Unlike Himedi, al burhan is a career soldier from northern Sudan who rose through the ranks under the nearly 30-year rule of al-Bashir and took the top job as the de facto ruler of Sudan after the coup. Let us dive deeper into the tensions between the army and the RSF. What is the source of tensions between the army and the RSF? The army and pro-democracy groups have demanded the RSF's integration into the regular armed forces. However, the RSF has resisted integration into the army, understanding it would lose its power. Negotiations on integration have been a source of tension that has delayed a final signing of a new transition agreement, originally scheduled for April 1. Dangalo and al reportedly remain at odds over who would be the commander-in-chief of the military during a multi-year integration period. The RSF said the commander should be the civilian head of state, a situation the army rejects. What is at stake in Sudan? The popular uprising in 2021 raised hopes that Sudan and its 46 million people could emerge from decades of tyranny, internal conflict, and economic isolation under al-Bashir. The current fighting centered on one of Africa's largest urban areas could not only destroy those hopes but destabilize a volatile region bordering the Sahel, the Red Sea, and the Horn of Africa. It could also play into competition for influence in the region between Russia and the United States and between regional powers who have courted different actors in Sudan. In fact, the United States has always been pointing fingers at the Russian-owned Wagner Group as the cause of the conflicts and unrest in Sudan. Now let us look at the role of international actors. What is the role of international actors? Gulf states have pursued investments in sectors, including agriculture, where Sudan holds vast potential, and ports on Sudan's Red Sea coast. Russia has been seeking to build a naval base on the Red Sea, while several UAE companies have been signing up to invest. al burhan and Hamedi developed close ties with Saudi Arabia after sending troops to participate in the Saudi-led operation in Yemen. Hamedi has struck up relations with other foreign powers, including the UAE and Russia. Western powers, including the US, had swung behind the transition towards democratic elections following al bashirs overthrow. They suspended financial support following the coup, then backed the plan for the new transition and a civilian government. Energy-rich powers Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have also sought to shape events in Sudan, seeing the transition away from al-Bashir's rule as a way to roll back his influence and bolster stability in the region. Egypt has deep ties to al burhan and the army and recently promoted a parallel track of political negotiations through parties with stronger links to the army and to al bashirs former government. Do you think that some of these international actors will stir unrest in Sudan for their interests? Let us know in the comments. What does the future look like for Sudan? As it stands, the great African state of Sudan is facing an uncertain future. The two individuals who seem to have saved the people from the 30-year rule of a so-called tyrant are now at loggerheads. International parties have called for humanitarian ceasefires and a return to dialogue, but there have been few signs of compromise from the warring factions. Sudanese citizens, meanwhile, have flooded out of the capital area. The army has branded the Rastef a rebel force and demanded its dissolution, while Hamedi has called al burhan a criminal and blamed him for visiting destruction on the country. The growing humanitarian crisis is leading to mass displacement within Sudan that could increasingly spill over borders. Already, tens of thousands have fled to neighboring states, including Egypt, Chad, and South Sudan. Of course, a full-blown civil war in Sudan could make things worse as the region is already grappling with ongoing conflicts in Ethiopia, South Sudan, 
and Somalia that have left tens of thousands of people dead and have displaced millions more, while climate change has also left its deadly mark, with repeated subpar rainy seasons exacerbating a humanitarian crisis. Sudan shares borders with seven countries. Five of those, Libya, the Central African Republic, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and Chad, are already theaters of ongoing armed conflict. Egypt and Eritrea are Sudan's other immediate neighbors. These countries will be heavily affected. However, South Sudan's President Salva Kiir, Kenya's William Ruto, and Djiboutian President Ismail Omar Ghele would visit Charkoum at the earliest possible time to reconcile the conflicting groups. The African people are watching and waiting to see what the African Union will do to bring peace to Sudan. Africans must stop looking to Western powers to solve their problems and handle issues themselves. What do you think of the power struggle and violence in Sudan? Do you think that both parties will make peace? Thanks for watching.